Hello, my little fair ladies and my little fair men and their mothers. How are you? Well, let's get started with the new story. I can see the glitter in your eyes. You're all as excited as I am to listen to the story. So here we go, the princess and the salt. We begin with like this, once upon a time. Let's all say it together long ago. Once upon a time, there was a king. He was a wonderful king. He was a wonderful father. And he had three daughters and he really doted on them. He loved them and he really took very good care. He was felt very proud as a king because he was a good king and he felt very proud as a father. And he really fulfilled all the needs and wishes of his daughters because he loved them dearly. So as they grew up, he decided to ask them how much did they love him in return. So he asked them. He called the three and they all came. And then he asked his eldest daughter, Yeah, Edmenda, do, how much do you love me, my dear, doll, darling eldest daughter? Oh, Papa, your highness. Now she was surprised that the father was going to ask something like that. She was really surprised. So, but she didn't know what to say because she really loved him, but she didn't know what to compare. But then she loved gold. So she said, Oh, that's the best thing she could think of. And she said, Oh, Papa, I love you as much as I love gold. <gasps> ah, the father was, the king was so happy because gold is very, very valuable. And he was so happy that his daughter loves him and finds him precious. Then he calls his second daughter. And the second daughter also came. So, uh, Shirina, Shirina was also a very nice girl. She loved her father, but she wasn't sure what she was going to be asked. But the father asked, Dear, dear, my dear middle daughter, my princess, I want to know, all I want to know is, how much do you love me? Ah, she loved diamonds. So she said, I love you as much as glittery precious diamonds, Papa. Your Highness, oh, he was up in the air. He was so happy. They found him so precious and valuable. Their love was so valuable. He was very proud of himself and them. Then he asked his third daughter, who was a little different. She was soft, kind-hearted. She was sensible as compared to the others. She was very intelligent. And she loved flowers and nature and things, you know, animals. So when she was asked, now she was always honest. She could not lie just to please others and of all the people, her father, whom she loved dearly with her own life because he had been so good to her. And uh, the father never knew that it was Serena who looked after his affairs and took good care of him. It was not the older daughters. Well, let's see what happens. Well, she said, I love you as much as I love salt. What? Woo! Woo! He got so angry, he turned her out of the castle and said, You better get out of here. You don't deserve to live here. I worked so hard to keep you happy, to keep you beautifully clothed, beautifully fed, and I wished I've fulfilled all your all your wishes, all your desires and needs, and this is what you give me in return. You don't deserve to live here. And he told his court courtiers nobody was to go with her, she was to go alone. Oh my god, that was true. And the princess had never been alone. You know, she had wondered because she loved nature and all. So she started walking towards the countryside. She was there were tears rolling down her cheeks. She was so unhappy and sad. She didn't want to live away from her sisters, not the castle. The sisters and the father. She was so unhappy. She didn't want to make her father angry or unhappy. But she couldn't change it now because he was so angry and annoyed and upset with her. So she kept walking and walking. And she was in her thoughts. And then she reached a forest. Oh my God, it was beautiful. First she was fascinated. But then she felt a little scared and quiet. And then she heard some horse steps. She realized, 
Oh, there must be someone. He might come and kidnap her or hurt her. She started frantically looking for a hiding place. But there was no hiding place. She didn't know where to go. And then suddenly she saw a, ho a hollow in a big, huge trunk of a tree. You know what a trunk of a tree is? Yes, the wooden round part of the, the body of the tree. And she went inside, she felt. She thanked God she was lucky. She found a hiding place. Little did she know that the rider who had slowed down now had seen her hiding. He, he was surprised that girl dressed like a princess. Why would she be all alone? Oh, then he realized she must be lost like him. So he came forward and very gently, little lady, I know you're hiding there. You don't need to hide from me. I'm safe. You're safe with me. I'm not going to hurt you. No, I'm not here. I'll try to help you if I can. But what are you doing here all by yourself in the forest? Oh, how can I tell you who I am unless you tell me who you are? Well, I am a businessman, a tradesman from the next kingdom. I lost my way. Then I came across this forest and so beautiful. So I was just wandering around and then I saw you running and hiding. How can I help you? What happened? How come you're here? Oh, uh, mister, he said, I'm John. Oh, Miss John, I am Serena and I'm lost and I have nowhere to go. She didn't tell him everything because she was a bit scared. We should not tell strangers everything about us. Is that right? So that's what we learned from it. Hmm. He said, okay, you have nowhere to go. But he was surprised. But then he didn't find it polite to ask her. He said, can, how can I help you? Can I take you home? My parents live there and they look after you. They'll help you out. Oh, are you sure your parents won't mind? He said, of course they won't mind. So he took her on the horse and they went a long way to the next kingdom and the princess, this uh, Mr. John's house, which was huge and comfortable. And he lived there with his kindly parents. So finally he reached home and he took Serena, Princess Serena, the youngest daughter, inside the house and he introduced her to her, to his parents. Mm, they were all very welcoming, they accommodated her and now she felt safe and she told them this story. Oh, they didn't know they had a princess, a real princess in their home. They looked after her very well. Now none of them could confront the king or tell him that the daughter was with them. He might get angry and punish them. So they kept quiet and she lived them with four months. And then Serena and Mr. John fell in love and they got married. Now, and they lived happily for years, they lived happily. One day John was hunting and he was really tired. Now he was coming back home, then he realized somebody was following him on his horse. And when he reached home, he turned around. Well, this was someone from a rich family for sure, either a king or a prince. But he was an old man and he asked him, Well, mister, ma, I don't know who you are, but I need, I have traveled long and I've been hunting and I'm lost. I don't have the strength to travel anymore. Do you think you could give me a little bit of shelter and some food to eat and I'll be very grateful and I'll make sure you're rewarded for that. Hmm. Now, um, John recognized him that he was Serena's father, his father-in-law. Oh, so he welcomed him in and then he informed his parents, called for his parents, but they were not at home. Then he went into the kitchen and told Serena that her father was in there, in the dining hall. She said, don't tell me, shh. Oh my God, she was thrilled. She was jumping in the air. She didn't know what to do. And while John told her he wants to eat something, he's famished, he's starving. Okay, okay, let me think about it. Don't tell him. 
that I am here, I am married to you. He said, fine. So he went and attended to the king and told him the food will be on the table. Serena thought of an idea. She sent all the cooks out of the kitchen and she started cooking. She was a very talented lady, you know. Wonderful, superb, splendid princess, human being. And she started cooking. But mind it, she had a trick. And what was the plan? The plan was not to put salt in any of the dishes. But she cooked four, five lavish dishes, which even shocked John that she could cook so much because they were used to having cooks cooking for them. Well, then the feast was laid in front of who? The king. He was excited. Oh, oh, thank you. Thank you, John. You are very generous and kind. John kept quiet. And now Serena was hiding behind the curtains and watching her father. And when he took a bite of one thing, oh, 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 what is this? It's, it can't be eaten. There's no, no taste. It's bland. Then he tried something else. Oops, poop, poop. Who can eat this kind of food? And then he tried the third one. Oh, my God. He did this and he said, what the hell, what the hell is this? Who's cooked it? Call your cook, I must speak to him. He hasn't put any flavor, no salt in these dishes. And then out comes Serena and she says, Oh, Father, this is Serena. I love, I'm so happy to see you. I missed you so much. The father didn't recognize her because he had gone old. And even Serena looked mature and older now. It had been quite a few years. And then from her voice, he recognized her. And she said, I love you, I missed you. And he got up, he was so happy. He embraced her, he hugged her, he had missed her. And he understood what a valuable daughter she was. She was the one who was doing everything for him. Now he was being neglected by his daughters who just cared for the worldly things. They were happy as long as they were getting jewelry and clothes and trips and joy but, and fun. And, but they had no time for their father. And here was Serena, he realized, was the one, the most valuable daughter. And she hugged him and they were so happy. And then she said, Oh, you wanted to meet the cook. Why? And he said, because there's nothing in it. Oh, she said, I cook the food and this, what, I, what is missing, Papa? He said, salt. How can I eat food without salt? It's impossible. And the moment he said this, he realized, oh my God, what have I, what did I do? Salt is the most precious, precious ingredient in food. You can't eat, you can't survive without it. And then he understood why Serena had said that she loved him as much as salt. Wow, what an intelligent girl she is. Plus we learn that valuable things, worldly things, glittery things, they, of course, they give you joy for a little while. And as a gift, as a message, they're not as valuable as the real, valuable gifts in which there is true love and true intention. Do you agree with me? Please write to me. I'll wait for your suggestions. Lovely to see you as usual. I'll come by again and relate the story to you. Love you.